This video will show you the basics of getting started with RetroArch on your Apple TV. RetroArch is a multi-console emulator available for free on the App Store. I recommend connecting a wireless Bluetooth controller because you can't really do much with the Apple TV remote. Let's open RetroArch. So when you open RetroArch, you'll be greeted with this pop-up. This is actually how you add games to RetroArch. You just go to the URL and add games to the downloads folder. You could do this on a phone or a computer. I'll go over both. So download all of your ROMs to your phone. RetroArch can run compressed files, so you don't need to extract them. But I recommend extracting the bigger files because it could take a long time to load in RetroArch. Now open a browser, go to the URL displayed on RetroArch. Press on the RetroArch folder, then press on the downloads folder. We'll upload our ROMs here. Press upload files, press choose files, and select a ROM. You can only upload one file at a time on the phone. So on a computer, I have all my ROMs here. I'm going to extract Parasite Eve since it's a big file. It's a bin and cute PlayStation ROM. Now open the browser, go to the URL, go to the RetroArch folder, and go to the Downloads folder. You can drag and drop multiple files here, although you can't upload folders. So I'll create a new folder for Parasite Eve and then drag and drop the ROM files inside the folder. So this URL is important. If you accidentally hit don't show again, you can find a URL under information, network information, and it's the one that looks like an IP address. Let's connect a Bluetooth controller now. Go to the home screen and open settings. Go down to remotes and devices. Go down to Bluetooth and make sure your controller is in pairing mode and then connect it. Let's jump back to RetroArch. Before we start playing, we need to assign the RetroArch menu button to our controller so we can exit out of games. Go to settings. Input, go down to hotkeys, and go to menu toggle. Click on it, and then click on a button on your controller that you want to use as the RetroArch menu button. In my case, I use the select button. If you need to remap your controller, go back and go to the RetroPad binds, select your controller, and here you can remap your controller. Alright, let's run games now. Go to the main menu, hit load content. Go to Downloads, and all of our ROMs are here. I'll start with Parasite Eve, which is a PlayStation game. Open the Q file. Now we select our core. Each core is basically an individual console emulator. So we know this is a PlayStation game, so we need to find a PlayStation core. There's multiple cores for the same consoles, because one core might run a game better than another. I tested the PlayStation cores before. The two Beta ones require additional BIOS files. So only PCSX rearmed works for PlayStation ROMs. Let's try one more game. Now press on the RetroArch menu button that we assigned to the controller and hit close content. Let's run Eternal Champions which is a Sega Genesis game. You'll see the screen if you open the compressed ROM. I usually hit Browse Archive and select the ROM file. Unless it's a multi-ROM file like PlayStation ROMs, then I'll hit Load Archive. So select the ROM. I'm going to select the Sega Genesis core. So this game didn't run. So we'll exit, reopen it, and select a different core. And you can see it works this time. That's the reason why it's good to have multiple cores for the same console. So at the time of this video, this app just launched, and there's still some bugs and some things that don't work. Like one of the key features, which is import content which organizes all of your ROMs by console 
and displays the box arts. Basically, you go to scan directory and scan the downloads folder, but for whatever reason, the downloads folder does not show up. And the last thing, if you want to change the skin for RetroArt, go to Settings, User Interface, scroll all the way down to Menu, and select from the three different skins. So you'll need to manually close RetroArt and reopen it for the new skin to show. And this is what the third skin looks like. And that's it. I try to keep this video as short as possible. There's just so much you could do in RetroArt, but I think this covers the basics. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching.